It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to maximize your RF 15 to 35 or any other wide angle lens truly on your EOS R, R5, R6, RP. And we're gonna show you some tools, tricks, and tips to make sure you get the best out of this amazing wide angle lens. Let's go. But first, you're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, let's go. One of the cool things about a wide angle lens is you got a cool subject and you can apply a cool perspective to it. I'm shooting this motorcycle at 1 over 250, f2.8, ISO 200, and I'm just gonna get low and a nice upward angle shot using the flip out screen so I can help compose that shot. Now I'm also going to turn on the touch shutter so that I can click the bike exactly where I want it focused and it will snap off the shot. The first thing is really easy and it's just that when you're shooting you can turn on an electronic level on the back screen and sometimes it's hard when you get down low or get down high get down high you get up high this helps you tell in your uh your flip out lcd screen if the camera is level which you might have trouble telling because the camera body you don't have it up to your eye to compare it to the horizon so the electronic levels tip number one so uh change it up get a nice uh front wheel chrome kind of reflection going off that hub right there and that's it just snap off a bunch of different angles and get creative, get high, get low, right? And that helps you get a level shot, even when you can't tell how this body, camera body is lined up according to the horizon. This is just the basics. Now we're gonna move into more specialized tips, tricks, and tools. All right, so one of the things I wanna talk about is using your shutter speed to capture movement. So we have some traffic here. Um, I'm gonna turn on the camera, open this up. Now the shutter's at one over 250. Um, because we did that shot of the motorcycle back uh, in the alley there. I want to put it down to 1 over 8. So I'm just going to roll this down 1 over 8. Now we see the sky. It's completely blown out. So I'm just going to change my aperture to like f11. Actually, f18 looks pretty good. Actually, I'll do f20. So now I'm just going to set this here. I'm going to come around here and I'm just going to click off a shot that's going to have the car moving in the frame. So I'm going to, ready, go. So now with that white car coming, you can see that it's gonna speed into the frame, but everything else is static. So we're just using uh, the shutter speed to help create a sense of movement. So I'm gonna do a couple more of those. Now again, I have some other things going on. I have this wide angle all the way open to 15 to 35, or 15 millimeters and the lines of traffic are coming at me. So those are the leading lines. So I'm just gonna click right here. And let's do one more after this truck. Right, get it right in the center of the frame, boom. We have the nice uh, crisp scenery and then the car is blurring through. That's a way to create movement inside the frame. Your wide angle shots will have that much more dynamic emotion and movement to them. All right, let's move on. All right, so a couple of things, um, tricks or tips or tools. Use your two second timer on the back. So you just turn this on, you wanna hit the Q menu, and then you have a drive mode. And under the drive mode, you're just gonna hit self timer two. That way, when you touch the screen, it'll count one, two. That way, when you touch the screen, the camera won't be moving from the touch. It'll count off two seconds and then it'll fire. Another tip that I didn't even talk about, but that's implied in there is have your touch screen turned on as a trigger. And so that way, when you touch the screen, it fires a shot. There's less camera movement than if you hit the shutter button, which rocks the camera body. There's a very delicate way to trigger a shot off. All right, that's good. All right, for this next shot, what I'm gonna do, instead of bracing this, uh, the camera and creating stability by putting it on a flat level surface like this, it's a stoplight, like this stoplight or a tripod, 
I'm gonna hold it, but I'm gonna turn the stabilizer on. So I have the lens stabilizer on, and what I'm gonna do is have it at a one eighth of a second, but I'm also gonna lower the camera in the frame so that there's really no room for a tripod. So I'm gonna get down here and I'm shooting up here low and uh, pointing up at this car. And what I'm gonna do is trigger it as the car starts moving. So I have kind of like an impossibly low angle, but then the car moving through the frame will create that, that movement we talked about earlier, but coupled with somewhere where the, the camera can't rest flat And so the idea is you're using the stabilization on the lens to help stabilize the shot. And got the low angle, there's no room for a tripod. You can see the gutter there, you see the car blazing through and we have crisp areas in focus because I manually set the focus. So that's one way to get some dynamic elements into your uh, low wide angle shots. So let me make sure I... So that was capture movement plus angle. Um, capture movement. Okay, now it's precision focusing. They're all big, big, big. Are they all the same size? Yeah, I like it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little kind of quasi macro photography session with this cupcake from Hoppa Cupcakes, shout out to them. They actually gave this to me on the house because I said I was making a YouTube video. Um, and so I'm gonna turn on my, my camera and the thing I want to make sure is I want to make sure manual focus is engaged. So here I have it turned on on the lens and then inside the menu, what I want to do is hit menu, go to the autofocus menu and I want to make sure that um, I have page two peaking on and focus guides on because I want those manual focus controls. So what I'm going to do is take this out like this. And I'm gonna put it just so that happened to work out perfect. There's actually a white little decoration right there. And that's gonna be my focal point is right there. So the reason this is important is I'm gonna manually focus it. I'm gonna shoot right here in the sun going down that way. Oh, right, that's beautiful, much better composition. And so I have uh, the touch screen enabled. Don't wanna fire off a shot. So I, I touch the screen to place the focal point on the top of the cupcake. I just rotate these so the green lines on the focus guides line up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the um, focus check area or there's a blue magnifying glass. I'm gonna hit that once and then hit info. And what that does is punch in five times. And if you hit info again, it punches in 10 times. Now the reason for this is I have a setting on the autofocus menu called lens electronic manual focus. And then that allows me to use autofocus and then override it. So what I'm gonna do is now that my focus guides are on, I'm gonna turn autofocus on. I'm going to hit the trigger, trigger halfway down and then I'm gonna hit my magnifying glass and then info to punch in 5% or five times and then I'm gonna punch in 10 times. Now, when I start to rotate the focus, I will be able to manually control uh, the focus point and so I'm going to put it right on that white little decoration that I want. Alright so here I'm composing the shot I have automatic focus on I hit this depress it once then I hit magnifying glass info punch in five per five times punch in ten times and now I'm going to rotate and adjust the manual focus point or adjust the focus point manually checking my focus in the back of the camera it's not just that the decoration or the frosting is in focus, it's the exact decoration because at a f2.8, it could be that halfway through the cupcake, it's blurry. I actually want the focal point right there on the edge. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just play with height. We're gonna get some height into the shots. 
Now, uh, I'm here, I was at F22, so I'm gonna roll that back down uh, to get to F2.8, speed up that shutter speed so we have a nice, kind of semi-bright outdoor scene. The sun's getting down, so it's a little bit moody in here. But I'm gonna uh, take a picture of this stool at the end of this uh, scene here. Actually, I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna take a picture of this uh, table and chair. Focal point is right here. And I'm gonna make sure I get the legs of the chair in this time. And you can kind of see the line of that table and chair. And it's a, it's a little makeshift courtyard. Next thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna add some height to my shot. So I'm gonna, same focal point, the edge of the chair, and I'm just going to tap on that to get the focus point, lean back a little bit to get the same composition. We have the same lines, but it's markedly different. All right, so I'm gonna step up here and get height with my body on a chair, shooting the same scene. I'm gonna raise this up a little bit here. All right, and the very last piece de resistance is we have a tripod here. I'm gonna put the camera on the tripod and uh, make sure that it is secured like that, tight. Make sure that's tight. And we're just gonna use this as kind of a monopod to get a higher shot. So what I'm gonna do is because I can't actually trigger it, I can use the app. I mean, I can't touch the trigger if it's above, above my head. So I'm gonna use the app or in this second, in this case, I'm just gonna do a uh, two second timer. I'm just gonna make sure my shutter speed is quick enough where it won't catch any camera shake. So I'm gonna practice once like this, get that angle right here. Uh, okay, I want the focal point down here. I'm gonna move that with my finger. And I can see, actually I need to turn this way down like that. I can see that that is right there, the same frame, but from about 12, 15 feet higher. So I'm just gonna put on two second timer right there. I'm gonna focus on the chair, 1001, 1002. Now I'm gonna do it again. 1001, 1002. And one more time for a good measure. 1001, 1002. So on the back of the camera, you can see it's more, it's almost like a drone shot, it's overhead. But this one's almost directly overhead. And then you can see that the perspective is much more vast, much more like a drone. Um, and so you just have those different levels by adding height with your arms first, stepping up on a chair, and then extending out the tripod. The key thing is there's gonna be camera shake or rotation. And I did it very quickly, but still at one over 250th, the image is pretty crisp. So that's another way to get some interest into your wide angle shots. So I'm actually gonna use these leaves for foreground interest. Now there's no real focus point, but I'm gonna set it for the table where the reflection is. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring the aperture to 5.6. So we get the sky back. And now I'm gonna put it on a 10 second timer. I'm gonna hit the trigger right now. And then I have 10 seconds to get it up into position so that it's peeking through these leaves and focused on that table. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there we go. I think it probably turned out okay. I would need to brighten up the shadows in Lightroom. And I think we got some leaves over here, some foreground interest coming together. Uh, the reflection of the sun setting on the tops of the tables. All right, so it's just a creative way to use height to make those wide angle shots. Kind of interesting, kind of sexy. All right, a couple more things we're gonna do at the intersection before we call it a day. Okay, all you're gonna do is uh, I have the focus point on your hand. And when I say go, you're just gonna bring the fork up to your mouth. Whatever happens, happens. The key is don't delay. So when I say go, just go. Ready, three, two, one, go. Okay, let me see how that was. Oh, we have a champion. Yeah. Uh, can we do it one more time? That one came out perfect. I just like to have uh, 
Back up. That's right. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna slow, slow the shutter speed down even more so that we get more of a blur. You guys did great. And uh, here we go. How fun is this? Okay, ready? All right, three, two, one, go. All right. I love it. Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He did awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, so another tip is just to throw in some fun uh, additional light. Now, this isn't a strobe or anything. This is just a, um, a LED light, an RGB light that I got offline. I'll, I'll put the link below. And what I'm going to do is shoot the cupcake, and it's just got a faint hint of pink and red shooting on it uh, from this light. And so what I'm going to do is we got the clouds and the sunset in the sky, but this has a pop of color. I'm getting the shadow from the sun. There's a shadow here and uh, we're just going to get this closer, closer. There we go. That's a fun shot right there. I had some pink light earlier on the flowers and it didn't look that good. So I have a more of a regular light, a white light. Um, I set the Kelvin to 4900 on the back of this and what I'm going to do is put this at 5.6 shutter speed is 100 and I'm just going to introduce this for a kiss of light on the blossom it's almost like a strobe and then I'm going to fire off a shot good and now I'm going to back up and get the base hey everybody thank you for joining and I hope you got something out of this video please subscribe if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet leave me a comment with your wide angle tips tricks and tools and uh, give it a like if you liked any part of this video. I'll see you in the next one. You're a beautiful person and a good person. You're a beautiful person. You're a beautiful person and you're a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. And you're a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first. Let's go.